So before we move on to the crank and cassette, I think it's time to talk about this new treatment that Campy's applied to most of the components in these new Grupos. Campagnolo has always built their components to last. I'm not talking about making it through three seasons of racing before you have to throw it away. I'm talking about a rebuildable, serviceable component group that, if cared for, can just almost be a family heirloom. Well, Campy realized that one of the biggest barriers to component longevity was the effect corrosive elements like road grime and toxic sweat have on metallic components. So this year, they've anodized the chain rings, nickel chrome coated the cassettes, and also anodized the bottom brackets into oblivion. Also, the derailleurs and even some of the internal workings of the shift levers have been given anti-corrosive treatments. The good news is that in addition to preventing corrosion, the new treatments actually prolong the life of the moving parts in the new Campy drivetrain. Here's a slide from the presentation that I got to see. The left side is the old UT chain rings. UT is ultra torque. The right side has the new ultra drive coating. As you can see, even after 3,000 kilometers, the new chain rings hardly show any wear. The next slide shows more of a static test. Campy added a salty, grimy solution to both chain rings and let them sit for 400 hours. As you can see, the old rings are shot and the new ones are obviously unscathed. And here's the same test they performed on the new hard anodized bottom brackets. Pretty amazing. Bear in mind that all of the moving parts in the new 11-speed groups have one sort of treatment or another. And the net result of these coatings is that they'll simply outlast nearly every other group on the market, and the replacement intervals for cassettes, chains, and chain rings is dramatically lengthened. I think this factor alone is a sufficient answer to the eternal question of why should I spend more for Campy? All right, back to the groups. Let's talk about cassettes. The new 11-speed cassettes feature synchronized cogs which help you rip through the gears smoothly and quietly, while the shifting is further enhanced by the new asymmetrical tooth shape. It's a little reminiscent of SRAM's missing tooth design if you ask me, but it goes a step further by adding more surface area to the individual cogs and a new aluminum frame or cog carrier that increases torsional stiffness of the upper cogs by an unbelievable 180%. Stiffer cogs mean crisper shifting, period. It also means you won't lose any power when you're hammering out of the saddle up your local Berg. The all-steel Chorus 11 cassette weighs 236 grams and has all of these new features. The Record 11 version is identical except for the top three cogs, which are titanium. Naturally, the Super Record features more titanium cogs, six in this case, and all of the same anti-corrosive, smooth shifting you'll find in the rest of the Ultra Shift group. All of the cassettes are available in 1123, 1125, 1225, and their new 1227. The Ultra Torque cranks have changed a little bit as well. The outboard bearings and hearth joint remain, of course, but for the new groups, Chorus, Record, and Super Record all have full unidirectional carbon with the new Ultra Shift hard anodized chain rings. The Chorus model differs because the crank arms are solid carbon, whereas the Record and Super Record are hollow carbon, which reduces the overall weight without compromising the overall stiffness of the crank. The line of demarcation between the cranks is Campy's new ceramic bearing technology. The record crank features Campy's new ultra smooth bearings, or USB, while the Campy super record crank has the new cult bearing system in the bottom bracket. So what's the difference? Well, most ceramic bearings sold for cycling applications are actually a hybrid bearing. They have silicon nitride, also known as ceramic, balls, and hardened steel inner and outer bearing races. Some bearings have upgraded cages, which is the plastic device that houses the ball bearings, and most of them are packed in white lithium grease. The record crank has precisely this type of bearing, ceramic balls, hardened steel races, all packed in white grease. Many of our customers are familiar with the difference between ceramic bottom bracket bearings and the difference they make when you're riding, and personally, I won't ride without them. But few know that it's possible to do even better, which is exactly what Campy has done with the cult bearings featured on the Super Record Crank. Campy worked with the German bearing company INA, who's the inventor of, among other things, the needle bearing, to develop this new bearing. I browsed INA's website 
and they actually invented a program that can calculate mechanical resistance and load down to the individual ball inside of a cartridge or an angular contact bearing. Whether or not that came into play here, I don't know. What I do know is that INA knows bearings, regardless of the size or application. In the collaboration with INA, several important changes were made to the bearings in the super record bottom bracket. The grease was replaced with low viscosity oil, the highest grade possible ceramic balls were used, the inner and outer races are made of INA's Chronotech steel, which is a chemically treated steel that achieves a very high hardness and maximum corrosion resistance through its chemical composition in combination with a new thermochemical surface without any problems even after 600 hours of testing in industrial applications. That means its corrosion resistance ends up being 200 times that of plain old stainless steel. So it can certainly handle all of the road grime and sweat that even the most avid cyclist throws at it. In other words, Campy just invented a bearing that is probably off the ABEX scale. There's simply not a higher quality, more durable bearing on the market, period. Okay, I'll admit it. I'm a Shimano guy. I have been for years. I've never been impressed with either the aesthetics, feel, or performance of Campy. The shifting was rubbery and vague, the drivetrains were a little noisy, and the shape of the levers just didn't really do it for me. Well, not anymore. I'm absolutely floored by these grooves. When I started writing the script, I didn't realize there was such a difference between not only 2008 and 2009 groups, but also between the individual groups within the 11-speed family. Now that I've had to dig into Campy's PowerPoint presentation and pay closer attention to the nuances, I must say, I think I've become a convert. I just may cancel my order for Dura A7900 and get in line for Campy. Why? Well, more than the new ergonomics and improved shifting, I'm quite impressed with the attention they've given to long-term durability. I mean, for roughly $200 more, I can get a group that may outlast the fairly non-serviceable 7900 group. I must say, as I get older and slightly more physically conservative, it's quite appealing. Campy builds this stuff to last and to be rebuilt, not replaced, when and if it ever breaks. I'm going to sleep on it, but I'm thinking there may be just one more Campy guy in the world in a few weeks. If you have any questions about Campy Chorus 11, Record 11, or Super Record 11, please feel free to give me a call or email me at andy at competitivecyclist.com.